If you look at any kind of animals, I think you always ask yourself the question, what is in their mind? What they feel right now? What they see? Do they have feelings? Do they, do they see me? I'm interested in the mind, and you have to look at behavior. It's only by your reactions, the way you move, that you can understand what's happening inside. It's quite challenging when you are facing a single cell organism that doesn't have any brains. I study ants and slimals. In a way, it's similar because they have a way to solve problems that is completely decentralized. Ants have a collective intelligence and slimals do not have a brain, so they're very different than us. So the way they solve problems fascinates me. I'm Audrey Dissutour and I study slimals because I'm interested in how organisms perceive their world. So I come from a big family, lots of kids. So my mom would always send us outside to explore the world because she didn't want us to be around, <laughs> I think. And so when you live in a countryside, the only thing that you can play with is the environment. So I was always collecting insects, or I always had a lot of animals at home, hedgehogs or guinea pigs, rabbits, whatever. Everything I could find, I wanted to adopt it. I still have this tendency, but my boyfriend says, no, no, we can't have that at home. <laughs> so you always wonder how it is to be them. And I was frustrating not to understand how they felt, what was in their head. So slime mold are a kind of ancient organism. Usually when you think about single cell organism, you imagine them to be super tiny. <laughs> but slime are huge. They can be more than 10 meters square for a single cell, which is amazing. And what is very unique also for this organism, you can really cut the slime mold into pieces and you will have lots of different clones. And if you put these two clones next to each other, they would fuse to make a big cell. They move super slow, like half a centimeter per hour. So to study the slime molds, we take pictures and we build time lapse. So you have a one and a half a minute movie, uh, but in fact it lasts 24 hours. It was really by accident that I came to work on slime molds. I wanted to see if like ants they could make complex decisions. We start to do a decision-making experiment. You're proposing to the slime mold lots of different food sources. They would straight away go to the one that maximizes their survival. They would never make a mistake. Slime molds were better than ants and in fact they are better than us at solving nutritional problems. When you start to work on slime, it's like for life, because suddenly you're like, oh my god, it's so amazing. <laughs> They're different between individuals. So if you take a slime mold from the US, for example, or from Japan or from Australia, they would be very different. So for example, Australian slime mold, if you offer them two foods, sometimes they eat from two foods at the same time. Japanese slime molds are more focused, American slime molds are more difficult. So it seems that you can have a kind of a personality when you're a slime mold. You have to feed them every day. Because if they, you don't do it, they escape. So yeah, I took my slime molds on holidays sometimes. We decided to train the slime molds. But at the beginning, we did it wrong because we got inspiration from experiment in insects. So of course it was a complete fail because I didn't put myself 
<laughs> in place of a slime one. I think sometimes to better understand the behavior, you have to try to think what is it to be this organism. So I stop and I say, okay, think. What is the slime all doing in this environment? You have to imagine yourself without central thinking, without, without sounds. We have a, a world with colors, they have a world of smells. If you look at slime, it's always going forward. So I say, okay, what if I put something in his path that he has to go through if he wants to eat? And do it again and again and again until he learn to ignore this substance. This is called habituation. It's the simplest form of learning. Slime mold, they don't like a lot of stuff. So they don't like uh, caffeine, they don't like salt, they don't like the uh, kind of bitter substance called quinine. So we tried with salt, caffeine and quinine, and it worked each time perfectly. With caffeine, for example, you would say, okay, I'm gonna stay here. I taste, no, I don't like it, I don't like it. I, don't, I taste it, oh, I don't like it. And suddenly it goes super fast. So this was the first time we demonstrate learning in a unicellular organism by following all the criteria that were presented by neuroscientists. But we didn't stop there, because slime was have something that animals don't have, they can fuse with each other. So we were like, okay, can we train another slime mold by fusion? In total, we trained more than 2,000 slime molds. We put them together, a naive one and a habituated one, and we let them fuse. You see a slime mold is never in contra caffeine before and straight away is habituated to ignore a substance that they don't like, just because he fused with another one that was trained. You could see that information could go from one to, uh, to until four slime molds. So it was quite an amazing um, discovery too. It's not just they can learn, but they can also teach others We discover how slime was habituated to salt. It was just because he's swallowing the salt. So we were able to inject, in fact, a memory in the slime mold just by adding the repellent itself. But we don't know exactly everything about that. So we're not saying that habituation in a cat is similar to habituation in slime mold. It's just the behavior is the same, but the mechanism might be different. It's still interesting to see that cognition is not restricted to animals. In French, you say, à quoi ça sert le blob? What is the use of slime molds? And I hate when people ask me this question. But you can say, okay, slime molds are very good at taking pollutants in the environment and keeping them. People are using slime molds also to model cancer. So there's lots of uh, potential applications for slime molds, but I will be very honest, it's not what drives me at all. For me, it's more about general knowledge. There are more interesting questions than they useful for us. In fact, we're just pushing the boundaries. Originally, we thought that uh, cognition evolved when the brain evolved. In fact, it was earlier than that. So perhaps a cell itself can be kind of a cognitive organism. When life came about, cognition came also. face my organism with problems, challenges, and I see how they solve it, but it always opens a new question. Because you say, oh my God, why did they do that? What fascinates me, it's being another type of organism, very different than us. But if you try to think like you are this organism, you can kind of get clues about how they perceive their world.